some maintenance workers at the 403rd Air Wing at Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi say they have become seriously ill from exposure to hazardous materials because of poor safety practices. Documents indicate Keesler leaders were aware of the problems as far back as 2009 and either ignored them or were hampered by military bureaucracy. Tonight, the results of a WLOX Newsdown investigation. Here's Hugh Keaton. WLOX News spoke with six airmen who say they have become ill from chemical exposure. Some would not speak on camera for fear of retribution. Three shared their stories with veteran journalist John Fitzhugh, who spent five months investigating. Sadly, one of those men died just two weeks ago from cancer he believed was caused by hexavalent chromium. I mean, this stuff literally kills you, takes you out, man. Larry McDonald, Joshua Powell, and Sean Delcom dedicated their careers to the Air Force. All served as maintenance workers with the Air National Guard's 403rd Wing at Keesler Air Force Base, home of the Flying Jennies and the Hurricane Hunters. All were in the prime of life and in good health. They are proud of their service records as reservists and civilian employees of the unit, but they feel like the Air Force has turned its back on them. I can't walk up a flight of stairs without being winded. I can't dance without, you know, having to stop because my thighs are hurting so bad. I've come to grips of knowing that I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life. You know, and being 37 years old um, and prior to this, I was the uh, epitome of, of health. I started uh, having high fevers and sickness in uh, September of last year. And after about two months in the hospital, in and out, it became uh, evident that I had some form of cancer. I have an autoimmune dis uh, disease that I developed and uh, sarcoidosis. I've de started to develop what they believe is fibromyalgia. My legs and back, always fatigue, pain, my joints, my vision. I've had episodes where I've, I've passed out. I have chronic sinus. Uh, issues that before all this I've never had any uh, kind of sinus problems or anything you know. Each man believes his health issues are a direct result of their exposure to hexavalent chromium, lead and other substances while working for the 403rd. Hexavalent chromium is the highly toxic chemical that was at the center of the environmental controversy depicted in the movie Aaron Brockovich. And you say that this stuff, this Hexavalent chromium. Oh, well, it's poisonous. Yeah. Workers at Keesler take care of every aspect of maintenance to keep the unit's 20 C-130Js flying. 1,500 people work at the 403rd, including 450 in the maintenance group. McDonald did the same job at Dover Air Force Base and transferred to Keesler in 2010. At that time, he had no health problems. He began documenting safety concerns shortly after he arrived. And she would tell you when I first got here, and I was looking at the processes because where I came from, I'm like, man, this the process is here. It's wrong what the full there is doing, man. Like this, this, just the, this, this is out of place. We don't have the, the we don't have the right things. In October 2015, an Air Force report on the maintenance center found elevated airborne levels of hexavalent chromium three times above OSHA's safety standards. These chemicals are present when workers prepare airplane parts for painting. According to OSHA, exposure to these chemicals can cause multiple health problems. A risk assessment code issued at the same time said surface swipes confirmed heavy metal contamination. McDonald and Powell said the test results were hidden from workers. Uh, yeah, bioenvironmental did this report, but rather than letting members of the unit officially know that you could have possibly been exposed to contamination, they chose to shelf the information and keep it to themselves. Keesler sent a statement to WLOX saying the results were posted October 8, 2015, but the test results document was dated October 21st, 2015, almost two weeks after Keesler said the results were posted for workers to see. I was at home sick for a couple months before I was contacted by uh, five or six different people and entities that started telling me about all these things, all these reports and standards and things that I really wasn't aware of. So I was at home thinking, oh, what the heck, I'm just kind of sick. 
and then I start hearing about all these other sick people. WLOX spoke to six maintenance workers at the 403rd that said they became ill in the same time frame. Three of them agreed to talk on camera. In June 2015, Larry McDonald's annual medical exam showed that he had medical issues which may be occupationally related. That should have triggered a series of OSHA-mandated medical tests. OSHA standards say workers exposed to hexavalent chromium should have been tested when they first began working at the maintenance facility and whenever they complained about health issues. We have encouraged those folks to, to seek the uh, medical assistance here on base. So we've had those conversations with our folks. Our supervisors have asked them to, uh, to work with the medical professionals here. Workers we spoke with say that never happened. Supervisor, what a supervisor supposed to do? fill out of Air Force Form 978. That wasn't done. Delcom said in March that members of the 403rd provided strong emotional support for him when he was diagnosed with cancer, but there was never an attempt to determine whether he became sick because of workplace exposure. Multiple records from Keesler and the Department of Defense as far back as 2012 show the need for a clean room for workers to remove contaminated work clothing to prevent them from carrying chemicals outside the maintenance facility. A plan is now in place to provide for a proper clean room, including laundry facilities, but construction is likely years away. Seven years have already passed since the clean room was first requested. It's a continuous battle to, to, to try to get the resources that you need. It takes years sometimes to, to get forward progress in some of these. Despite the memos indicating safety problems and McDonald's 2015 medical exam showing a possible link to workplace exposure, Stanton said they still needed further data to establish a causal connection between the two. Well, I think we're still in the determination to, to see if there's, you know, a link between the, the illness and the, uh, and the environment that's uh, presented here. But long before Stanton came to the 403rd, Air Force records show that there was a need for better safety measures at the maintenance facility. There are signatures acknowledging this for years, not, not just now, even with this interview, not, not just now. It's been years, you know, dating back a decade, that this has been a, a known problem, a known issue, and nothing has been done about it. Tonight, John Fitzhugh continues his investigation with why Keesler workers say they went outside the military for help. I said, somebody's gonna, gonna get sick. I said, because this is all wrong. Shortly after transferring to Keesler in 2010, Larry McDonald began documenting what he saw as safety violations at the maintenance facility for the aircraft flown by the Hurricane Hunters and Flying Jennies. Workers are exposed to dangerous chemicals, including hexavalent chromium, when they prepare airplanes and parts for repainting. The chemical has been a known problem for years, as described in this 2016 Air Force video. Hexavalent chromium is an additive in aircraft spray paint that's been used for more than 40 years for corrosion resistance and durability. But it's a known carcinogen, and the Department of Defense wants it gone. McDonald began gathering Keesler documents that showed that Base Command was aware of the problems as early as 2009. Over the years, McDonald said he tried to get the problems corrected, but he was told there wasn't enough money. And I would ask those questions like, hey, wh where's our um, laundry facilities? You know, wh wh where is, where is our, um, our, our shower units and stuff like that? We don't have funding for that. I'm like, wait, but in the, in the guidelines, it says that the employer is supposed to furnish this stuff. In the same time frame, McDonald began to have multiple illnesses that he believes were caused by exposure to hexavalent chromium and other substances at the 403rd. He was not alone. Several other workers at the unit, including Joshua Powell and Sean Delcom, had become ill. Two weeks ago, Sean Delcom died. Including myself, there were five other individuals that were actively having health issues. And that was just in the maintenance squadron alone. It could just be a big coincidence that five or six of us under 40 are severely ill, you know. Um, but then you're looking at five or six out of 20 that have worked there over 10 years. McDonald turned to Crusaders for Veterans, an organization that helps veterans navigate Department of Defense mazes. So you're going to go in for another evaluation with your doctor in here? Larry Cuddle of Crusaders said the Air Force refused to talk to him about the safety violations. Instead, they sent an attorney from the Judge Advocate's office to meet with Larry McDonald. That attorney, McDonald said, threatened him with demotion if he continued to press the issue. 
He said, I understand that you're frustrated. I will be frustrated as well. But don't start a fire in your living room and go around and start losing stripes. In July, Keesler described the meeting as non-contentious, but did not specifically deny McDonald's claim. We want to make him right. I mean, he's paying for his own medical bills from a work environment problem. That's wrong. Tear down that building, put one up that's got the proper cleaning area, the proper laundry area. Let's prevent future incidents. If they would address this no nine, he'd be healthy. His family would be happy. You know, because that contamination in, in those levels that were reported didn't happen overnight. You know, that's been an ongoing thing. Records from Keesler show that the conditions that led to the 2015 elevated levels of hexavalent chromium existed as far back as January 2008. Other records dating back to 2009 indicate that those conditions led to violations of OSHA, Air Force, and Department of Defense safety standards at the 403rd. McDonald said his health issues were documented in his 2015 annual health exam done by a Keesler physician. In March, Delcom told WLOX that leadership in his unit clearly knew about his cancer because he was taking time off to be treated. In an April interview, Colonel Robert Stanton said he didn't learn about the health issues until January. We want to find out if there really is uh, an issue here uh, within this wing because uh, our folks, I mean, the most valuable resource we have are the people. All of the workers we talked to said they are concerned about future members of the 403rd being exposed the way they were. You know, we had about 1,200 people in the maintenance squadron. You know, and that's 1,200 individuals that have jobs and family outside of the military that have been exposed to a contaminant that can basically do them like it did me. It robbed me of my ability to be able to perform my job as a reservist working on aircraft and it also robbed me of my ability to be able to provide for my family. Because if you know that this is there and you're not doing anything about it, you letting people walk into a dead trap because this stuff destroys you. Tonight, a follow-up to a WLOX news investigation about workers at the 403rd wing at Keesler Air Force Base. The widow of one of those workers says she is not satisfied with the Air Force response and says she's determined to make something good come out of her husband's death. Often when we say, I miss daddy, I want daddy. Eileen says the same thing, I want daddy. They miss, they miss their, their loving and attentive father. Amy Delcom said she and her three daughters are still coming to terms with grief and anger after the death of her husband, Sean, in early August. Both Amy and Sean believed his cancer was a direct result of exposure to the potent carcinogen hexavalent chromium while on the job at Keesler Air Force Base. I think they're trying to keep it as quiet as possible. No one has addressed the issue. Like The elephant in the room is still not being addressed. That elephant is the paper trail documenting violations of safety policies from January 2008 till at least May 2012. Since our investigation began, the Air Force and OSHA have conducted a series of tests at the 403rd. Those tests, the Air Force said, showed that interim control measures put in place were meeting the intent of OSHA regulations. However, a Kiesler report says tests done in May showed a presence of CRVI, or hexavalent chromium, on the break room tables of the fabrication flight. The Air Force memo on those tests was issued a month before the Department of Defense sent letters to Mississippi and Alabama congressional leaders saying no contaminants were found during this inspection. I have no faith in any, anything that comes out of Kiesler in terms of what they say they found and tested um, because it, it, it contradicts physical evidence that I've seen. In an email and video statement sent today, 403rd Wing Commander Colonel Jeffrey Van Duding reiterated that OSHA inspectors have not placed any restrictions on the current flight fabrication process. If I thought for one second we were putting airmen at risk, I would immediately shut down fabrication operations and personally padlock the door. Delcom said she will continue to press for change as a way to find something positive in her husband's death. I am absolutely not going to stop until something good comes out of this. I want to be able to say to my daughters, yes, your daddy died, but we were able to create change that saved other people's lives.